So why do we eat kosher food? The Torah tells us in Sefer Vaikra, Parashat Shmini. The Torah tells us there all the law of the kosher animal and the non-kosher animal. You know, all the creatures that we're not allowed to eat, the bird that we can eat, the bird that we can't eat, and chicken, and on and on. But we have to understand why we as a Jewish nation been limited to certain food. Did you ask ever yourself? How come that the rest of the nation allowed to eat whatever they want, to drink whatever they want, and we as a Jewish nation not allowed? Did you ask yourself this question? So we have a doctor here. Am I right? Doctor, you're going to help us. Correct me if I'm wrong, and let's see where we're going. Let's see what the Torah tells us. So to, to understand that, we have to understand one thing. I'm going to give an analogy for us to start to understand what are we talking about. The same like an engineer, a manufacturer, when he manufactures certain machine, when he releases that machine that he make, he gives with that a manual, how to service it, how to look after it, what you're allowed to do with that, what you're not allowed to do with that. I mean, you agree with me, Mesh, as an engineer? Okay? A Kadosh Baruch Hu that created human being, tell us, that we as a Jewish people have to eat certain food. That means that we have to have a certain diet. And the Torah in Parashat Shminit, in Sefer Vaikra, HaKadosh Baruch Hu exactly tell us what are we allowed to eat, what we're not allowed to eat. Not only that, in Parashat Shav, there he speak about meat and milk. we see that we are limited to certain diets. You all agree with me, Nahon? There's anyone that doesn't agree with me before I continue? Okay, Baruch Hashem. So to understand that, Hazal tell us, Hazal, Hachamenu Zichronam Livracha, our sages, may God bless them. In Vaikra Rabbah, chapter 11, verse 2, Hazal give us a knowledge for us to understand why are we obligated to certain diets, when the rest of the nation not obligated to this kind of a diet. Hazal tell us in Midrash Vaikra Rabba, listen to that. It was a doctor that he was looking after two patients, two sick patients he had. One patient, we allowed him to have everything. That means he can eat whatever he wants, he can drink whatever he wants. And the other patient from the other way, been strict to a certain diet. Hazal come and tell us it's the same with the Jewish people. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that is the creator, tell us certain food can harm you. Certain food, it's not good for you. And we soon, we're going to go through the Mepharshim, through Rabotenu. We're going to go according to the Pshat, according to the simple reason, and then we go according to Kabbalistic reason. Why are we not allowed to eat non-kosher food? What's the secret behind? So we see from here that HaKadosh Baruch Hu... Why... Gershon, when we get to the secret, you'll ask the secret. Okay? When we reveal the secret, you'll ask the secret. Okay, so we see here that we brought what the Midrash tells us. And we see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that chose us, is the chosen people, given us a spiritual reason, obviously, and a health reason, obviously, not to eat certain food. Let's see how the Mepharshim explained that. I'm going to start with Sefer HaChinuch. You all heard about Sefer HaChinuch? Sefer HaChinuch, some people say that been written by Rabbi Aaron Alevi. Rabbi Aaron Alevi born 780 years ago in Spain. And he explained like this. Listen how we explain why we're not allowed to eat non-kosher food. And he said, the main reason that HaKadosh Baruch Hu 
forbidden us from eating non-kosher food because it can harm the Jewish person. Can harm. Remember the word. The Rashbam, listen how he said. By the way, the Rashbam, it's Rabbi Shmuel ben Meir. He born 935 years ago in the northern of France. And he said like this, you know why a Jewish person not allowed to eat non-kosher food? Listen to what he said. The main reason that HaKadosh Baruch Hu forbidden on us to eat that, the non-kosher food, because it can harm our health. Sefer HaChinuch can say can harm a Jewish. The Rashbam say can harm the health of a Jewish person. We'll explain the difference. The Sforno, Rabbi Ovadia Sforno, he born in Italy 545 years ago. You know how he say, how he explained the main reason that we're not allowed to eat non-kosher food? This is what he said. The main reason that HaKadosh Baruch Hu put us on certain diet to eat certain meat, certain food, is because the sin of Heta Egel, the golden calf. Because the sin of the golden calf, we're not allowed to eat food that the unpure. Why? Because the might going to contaminate us. To stop that and to become closer to Akadosh Baruch Hu, you have to eat certain food, and they are kosher. That means that now that we receive the Torah, we're obligated to eat certain food that we can come closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that we can get the fear of heaven on us. We're going to explain all of that. Baal HaKedah, there's a book that's called Baal HaKedah. The writer, it was Rabbi Tzhak Arama. Rabbi Tzhak Arama born in Napoli, in Italy. He born 595 years ago. He explained the main reason that HaKadosh Baruch Hu forbidden the Jewish people to eat all different kinds of food. You know why? To teach him to control his desire of food. By that, that we forbidden from eating everything and drinking everything, that will teach us or discipline us not to follow after desire of eating too much. So if you see from here, there is a health reason. We'll explain that also. The Maharal, the famous Maharal Miprag. Everyone heard about the Maharal Miprag. He was a, you didn't hear about him? The Maharal Miprag, I'll give you his name, Rabbi Yudah Livia Ben Bechalel, he born in Poland 495 years ago. I don't know how many of you know, he created a golem. You know what is a golem? Huh? A zombie. A zombie. You call it in English. But everyone looks to me like a zombie now. <laughs> no, I'll explain. The Maharal Miprag lived during the time that was a lot of program on a Jewish. The Gentile caused a lot of problem. And he created the golem. And that golem used to fight against those that tried to harm the Jewish people. The only difference is that that zombie that the Maharal created couldn't speak because it wasn't a creation of HaKadosh Baruch And I heard about, I heard it yesterday that in the name of the student of the Gaon Mivilna, listen, the Gaon Mivilna started to create it a golem, a zombie. But HaKadosh Baruch stopped him, told him not to create. That's been written by the student of the Gaomi Vilna, that he also wanted to create a zombie. Now, the zombie, you couldn't use it for personal thing. You must understand. Only to benefit the Jewish people. That's what the Maharal created him in that time. So now you know a bit of the Maharal. The Maharal say what it's mentioned in Bereshit Rabbah, the Midrash of Bereshit Rabbah. Listen to what the Midrash tells us. 44.1 it said like this, Lo nitnu mitzvot Israel ela letzarfam. That the main reason that the Jewish people got mitzvot, you know why? 
to purify us. What's the connection here? So the explanation is like this. The main mitzvah that we get, when we do a mitzvah, we purify ourselves. We can't purify ourselves. We're purifying our holy neshama. That means that we're making our neshama much more pure. That's what the Maharal said. So now we see here from, our, from the, we brought five of the Mepharshim. And let's explain. The one say it's harm, the Sefer HaChinuch say it's harm, the Jewish person. The uh, Rashbam say that it's harm, the Jewish health. Why? How come that it can harm the Jewish person? We see that the Sforno say, the Sforno completely says something else, that the main reason is because Heta Egel. What's the connection of Heta Egel to food? Ba'ala Akeda say it's to teach us how to control our desire from eating not too much. How does all of that fit with health? We have to understand. You know, many, many of us today, when I say many, there's many people that are suffering from overweight. Overweight, we know that lead to cholesterol. Yes. Lead to problem with the heart. Sugar diabetes, am I right, doctor? Absolutely. What else, doctor? We can make the list nonstop, huh? <laughs> I don't want to say high blood pressure. Huh? Uh, Gershon said that I'm speaking personal to him. No, no, Gershon, it's not personal to you. I promise you. Many people have a problem of loving to eat. So the idea is, is to know how to control it. So we see that what Hazal tells us in few words, it's what the science world finds today. That food, it's healthy. You know, you need to eat, you eat. You need to know how to stop. And maybe here it's the time for us to understand while we're speaking about food. I see many people going to a simha and they start with the starters, it's beautiful. When they see the main meal, they say, listen, I'm full, but you know it's for free. Well, I can't stop it. So they eat. You know it's for free. It came to dessert. He can't even stuff a pen inside, but it's for free. I have to eat. It's the same with the drink. You know, the whiskey is for free. It's good. When my daughter born 21 years ago, doctor, tell me if it's true or not. I'll tell you a story. That's a personal story. I got a pain in my chest. What a pain. I was thinking that I'm dying. Anyway, I'll make the story short. I was a doctor. De Seta is a special heart specialist. I don't know if you know about him. In the Mill Park, he said, I can't help you. I said, what do you mean you can't help me? They say, you're the best. He said, I can't help you. What? I said, so what do you want me to do? He said, you're going to go to the Jobek Gen. And that was exactly when they opened the Jobek Gen to become, you know, when Mandela got released. I'm gone. I see a little short doctor like me, short person. He said to me, take your shirt off. Okay, take my shirt off. They shaved my chest. And here I come, I see like in the movies, you know, you see that... All of those machines start gluing into you. He says, start running. I tell you, for a half an hour, I'm running on a treadmill. And the printout was from here to next year. I said to my wife, you know, I hope that that bill, I don't know who's going to pay that bill. I hope that I'm not paying for his bond, you know, to the doctor's bond. Anyway, after half an hour, he said, please dress up. And then he came to see me and he said, you know, Mr. Levy, I want to tell you something. You are 100% healthy. I said, Baruch Hashem, thank you. By the way, he was Jewish. He said, but can I give you advice? I said, sure, doctor, I would love to hear. He said, please, every night, I want you to drink a tot of whiskey. <laughs> so now, I didn't know that he understand Hebrew, so I said to my wife in Hebrew, are you sure that this is a doctor is not uh, drunk? <laughs> <laughs> so he understand that. You know what he said to me? Listen to what I'm telling you. It's healthy, and I'm not drunk. Is it right, doctor? It's healthy. 
Anyway, later on I found out that it helped to dilute the blood and many other things. So everything is in moderation. So it's come to tell us, Hazal knew it hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, that the food in moderation is healthy. So you have to control your desire, how much to eat. That's what the, that, what the Baal HaKedah said. We said that the Sforno come to tell us to fix of Heta Egel. What Heta Egel? We'll see now, we'll get to the spirituality of why are we obligated to eat kosher food. We'll see now. But we say that Baal HaKedah said that it's harmed the body. It's harmed the Jewish person. And the Rashbam say it's harmed the Jewish body. So we'll see now, we're going to explain. According to Kabbalistic, and I'm going to bring the Ari that bring it to the name of the Kabbalah. Why are we obligated to eat kosher food? A Jewish person obligated to eat kosher food. A matter of fact, if he doesn't eat kosher food, we'll see now how much it harms him. So Ari Kadosh say like this. By the way, I'm going to repeat again, Ari Kadosh, it's Rabbi Itzhak, Luri Ashkenazi, he born in Yerushalayim 481 years ago. And he explained that the main reason that when we eat kosher food, it's good for us, it's like this. And he said like this, when a Jewish person eats food, he gets for it certain thing. So he starts like this, and he said, when we eat, kosher food, you follow what I'm saying? Beside the physical <coughs> that we're getting from it, that means the slice of meat, or whatever is it, we get the physical food to fill up us. We get the spiritual that there isn't that food. The spirituality that there isn't that food that we're eating, we get it also. That's me. Let's develop it. That when we eat certain food, for example, we inherit the character trait of that animal that we're eating. Now we're going to develop it. The Kabbalists, according to Kabbalah, they explain that when you eat certain animals that are not kosher, you inherit the character trait. Now, if you look carefully, all the kosher food, the animals that we're eating, the head facing down, nachon, to show humility, humbleness. When you look at predators, the lion, the cheetah, arrogancy, nachon. Let's move on. We're not allowed to eat, for example, snake. Why not to eat snake? In the Far East, they're eating snake. Anyone was here in the Far, far East? Did you see how they're eating them? Yeah. They love it, huh, David? All of those, they love it, huh? Everything that moves, they eat. Someone told me. In the Far East, whatever moves, they eat. Even cats. Huh? Even? Cats. What? Pigs. We'll get to the pigs. Wait, wait, wait. Now, everything that you eat, you inherit the character trait. So you say, but there is animal that they're not predators, like Gershon mentioned now, a pig. A pig, if you dish him a five-star meal, if he doesn't mess it around, doesn't make it faulty, he wouldn't eat it. So the main reason that we're not eating this kind of animal, not to inherit that kind of a behavior, carry to the trade. You understand? Now we say that it's not healthy. That's the spiritual part. Not to inherit those kind of things. But we have to understand why. The main reason that we're not doing it, you know why? Because the Torah tells us, venitam tembam. What does it mean, venitam tembam? Venitmetembam, with Aleph. It doesn't mention the, the latest Aleph. 
If you want to contaminate something, tame, tet mem alef, nachon? To be contaminated. Here it doesn't say. Hazal exempt venitamtem bam. Because you, the chosen nation, you receive the Torah. And if you receive the Torah, the Torah has a different level. The Torah is pure. The Torah needs to understand the Torah, you have to be pure. To understand the Torah, you have to eat certain kind of food. What is it? Kosher. And that's what it says when it tamped and bam. Why? Because when people eat non-kosher food, they'll find that they can't understand the Torah. The Torah doesn't speak to them. It's like a block. It's can't understand. You can't understand nothing. Not only that, we say that about the health. We as a Jewish people have a mitzvah of kindness. Mercy. If we eat predators and we inherit this kind of a habit, we can't have, we're blocking ourselves for being more sensitive towards other people. More sensitive about Klal Am Israel, the Klal nation even. So the main reason we see from here that we're not allowed to eat non-kosher, it's two reasons. Physical and spiritual. So now you're going to jump and say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. That's non-kosher food. But the Torah tells us, You're not allowed. No? Ah, milk soup with? So let's make it simply. You're not allowed to eat meat and milk. For example, a cheeseburger. Why not? Did you ask yourself, let's say that the meat is kosher and the cheese is kosher. What's so terrible of eating both of them? Did you ask yourself? Different digestion rate. Okay, okay, you're very right, yeah? But let's develop it. Science today has been proven. Nachon Mesh, we spoke about it just before we came, just before uh, the show started, before Minha started. Scientifically today, proven. You ask every person, every soldier in the Israeli army, if there is any toxic in the air, they'll tell you to have some milk, nachon? To yeah. stop that. Until, immediately, give that person, if he's been exposed to some kind of a poison, give him milk until he gets the first medical aid, until he get to a doctor. But the first aid that you can do with him, give him milk. Nahon, doctor? Yeah. Why? It's alkali. Because it's full of? It's an alkali. That's it. It's stopped. It neutralizes the acid. It stopped the acid. It's actually what it's doing. It's bond the acid. Let's put it this way. Nahon, doctor, if I'm not mistaken. So when you eat meat, and meat is a heavy food, Heavy food to digest. Chicken, meat, whatever the case is. I don't, meat is not. Meat is the, 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 the rabbanan. It's not the orita. That's from a rabbinical. But when you're eating meat, and inside that cheeseburger you put, on top of that burger you put a cheese, you actually, what you're creating, two different forces to fight once against each other. Inside our stomach, we have juices that are full of acid. That that help to digest the food that we're eating. That's mean to break the food, to allow us to digest it. Now, doctor? And if now I'm putting me, with that meat a piece of cheese, I'm creating a negativity. That's mean that that's not going to allow the juices in a stomach to break the meat. Sorry, you wanted to ask Simon. Yeah. Uh, meat and fish. No, no, I'll explain meat and fish. Meat and fish is a different medical reason. Wait, 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 wait. But it's not too kosher and non kosher. Oren, yes. Another religion. Uh huh? Another religion. Yes, yes. Nachon. The healthy people. Okay. And you have in Muslims, they drink the yogurt after they eat the meat. 
נכון, 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 so. Okay, we have a doctor here. Wait, the doctor will tell you that what our sages tell us today silently, everyone found, is when you eat it, meat and milk together, explain to what it's doing to the stomach. How much harm we're causing ourselves? How much cholesterol the body gets full? Am I right, doctor? You don't see immediately the damage. You know, Oren, you're good with certain things. When you go and sell all your pyjamas, I'm going to publicize you now, all your curtain, how do you sell them? You come, you show a suit, oh, I love that suit. Even that it looks like a curtain or like a nightgown. When do you see the money? When do you see the money? Oren, I'm speaking to you. You see the money after a month. Nachon? So you don't see immediately when you sell the profit. That's the same. Here, you don't see the harm immediately. Cholesterol, no one knows. But suddenly a person finds, you have a cholesterol, problem with the heart. Yes, David. Another example. Take the, uh, the winners of the Rugby World Cup, the All Blacks, their team. They're the finest specimens of physicality. There's nothing wrong with them. They're strong. I guarantee you they're not eating kosher food. But what they are doing is they're having a balanced diet. How would you but But wait, 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 wait. You're mixing now. You're mixing two things. We say that the food, the kosher food, the kosher food is not just for health. It's also for spirituality. Okay. So if we're talking about health, you see many, you do, why did you go so far? Why did you go so far to the old blacks? Let's go to the Far East. Let's look at those people that wrestle... The Soma people. And here's a team that have just won the prize. I mean, they are superhuman beings if you look at them. First of all, I don't think that they're superhuman beings because it just they have a luck that they win. Take them, take them in four years' time. If they're superhuman beings, they should be all the time superhuman beings. Now they're in the peak. Give them a year time. Oh, give that superhuman being that you call him a bit of a diarrhea. Let's see how he's going to run, run on a rugby field. Am I right, doctor? He can't move. A bit of a headache, he can't move. He's in his peak because he's young. He doesn't feel it now. But let's see how he's going to act when he's 50. So the Torah come and tell us that you want to be healthy also in an older age. Eat this diet. The diet, that diet, you don't have to run a sprint all your life. That diet will help you to maintain your health until all the age. I promise you that if you take the superhero rugby in your age and you run with him today, he can't even walk, he saw Chalupa, from all the damage that he had, the scrums. So in that time, he was strong. But the Torah doesn't speak about the short time. The Torah speaks about the long time. The spiritual part about it. You follow? Now, I need to answer what Simon asked. Because he's sitting quietly and he asked. The main reason that we're not allowed to eat meat and fish, Hazal tells us that the main reason for it, it's there is a disease that called Leprosy in English, you call it leprosy, tzara'at. But it's not exactly tzara'at. If you ask the doctor, there is different kind of a leprosy, nachon? So when you eat meat and fish together, healthily, medically, it can cause you a certain of a skin disease. You follow? That's the main reason. You follow? You can't have it. Obviously, separately you can have them. The same. Let me tell you something. You know, you know, let me tell you something. You know that the Sfaradim, according to Sfaradi Alacha, a person not allowed to have fish 
and milk together. When you're allowed to have tuna lasagna, milhik tuna lasagna, this father can't have it. Did you know that? You know that, doctor? That's it. I heard that people said it was machni them that you just think strict. I didn't know it was smoking. It's only the Sephardi. Because I don't want to go into it. The, the, the Maran Shulchan Aruch, Rabbi Yosef Karu, said that we're not allowed. The Ramah said he didn't see it anywhere. So therefore, the Ashkenazi allowed to eat not meat, fish and milk. Sephardi, they're very strict. You can eat them separately. What? <laughs> Baruch Hashem, you Ashkenazi, you allowed. You see, I can't eat it. You see, I have to be jealous. Ah, you can't eat it now. <laughs> but you say cream cheese. Okay, the time's running short. Let, let, let's summarize what we say. Let's summarize what we say. We're saying here that the main reason that we obligated to eat kosher food, obviously, if we, we can develop that show for a few hours, but I need to summarize because we're running late. That the Torah tell us, Akadosh Baruch Hu tell us in his holy Torah, that as a Jewish person you're allowed to eat only kosher food. Why? That because you receive the holy Torah. To understand the secret of the Torah, only kosher food. Why? To be more sensitive. Not to be to adopt, actually, all the character traits of the non-kosher animal, to be more humble, you have to eat certain kind of a food. To understand the secret of the Torah, that's why you're eating it. Health reason we see, that's also not healthy. That the Torah come to teach us also a personal discipline. How much to eat, when to eat. We know that between meat and milk, if you eat in first milk, meat, you have to wait six hours until you eat milk. So the Torah also given us here a manual of discipline. Not to follow our desire. To teach us to be more modest, more sensitive to control our desire. So not for nothing the Torah tells us kosher food. And by Ezrat Hashem, if we keep to kosher food, we'll see the difference. I just would like to end with one thing that I heard just before I came. You know the shechita, you know how they shecht. Everyone obviously knows. The knife has to be so perfect, sharp, that the animal doesn't feel. But it works only on kosher animals when you shake them. But we all know that the non-kosher, how do they kill them? They take a nail and they shoot them in the head. Just before I came, I heard the show, and I heard what they say. You know, when you shoot it in the brain, there's certain poison that there is in the brain that's run straight into the blood. And when you eat that, that can cause a lot of toxic. Now remember, that the main reason that we're eating kosher food, one of the main thing is to drain the blood. Nachon? Meliha. You put salt and you take all the blood that there is in a meat to drain it. It's absorb it. And then Oren said that the meat is finished. But imagine that the meat, imagine that you would eat the meat with the blood. What does the Torah tell us? Adam wa nefesh. Why you can't eat blood? Because the soul is inside. You become more cruel. Do you understand that when Akadosh Baruch Hu created us, certain menu he given to each one of us. Us that we receive the Torah, that we have to be more sensitive, that we have to be more humble, we have a certain diet. The same like we mentioned at the beginning. That certain, that when the doctor treated the two patients, one of them can eat anything. Why? Because the food wouldn't harm him. 
But the other one that he put on a strict diet, because if he'll eat everything, it's going to harm him. And if you ask every diabetes, they'll tell you, I know it for my mom, my late mom. It was so difficult for her, sometimes she needed something sweet, sugary, especially after you eat meat. You need something so up level. It's very difficult. Yes, David. We learned it in the parashat Shavua. Where you been? That he offered them butter. He offered them butter, milk, and meat. Nachon. That's what uh, we ask. We spoke about it. You remember Simon? You asked. The milk first, and then the milk. What did he offer them? So there's few answers. That what did he offer them first? The milk. Yeah. And the milk take a half an hour after you eat milk. You can eat meat. But there's another answer. And that time they didn't receive the Torah, so they didn't have obligated to reach. When is those, all of those kosher law came? After we receive the Torah. And by Ezrat Hashem, now that we know, we'll try, and HaKadosh Baruch Hu will help us to keep more kosher, to be careful with what we eat.